Twitter can be a very interesting place for discussions that touch on things that matter and how we ought to structure our life, how we ought to prioritize. So we've got this great conversation happening around this tweet from Steve dot millionaire habits or steve on speed who tweeted out there by age 30 you should have a group of friends that talk business money and fitness not politics and pop culture and you notice there's over 6,000 retweets, over 10,000 quote tweets, 33,000 likes. And this is quite interesting because, at least in my Twitter feed, most of the people that I'm seeing responding to this don't really like it. And I think there's a great conversation to be had around this, some of which is joking, some of which is very serious. So let's jump right into it. First off, Steve followed up with a few things that I think provide a bit of interesting context. So one of the things that he said immediately after this was one of the biggest mistakes I've ever made was making friends with like-minded folks who talked about the same shit over and over. I agreed with 99% of it. Your comfort zone will kill your progress. And there's probably something to that. I'm not sure that it aligns all that well with his command that we should have a group of friends that talk business, money, fitness, and not politics and pop culture, because it, you know, you can be just as hive minded when it comes to business, money, and fitness as you can with anything else. Another thing that he said that I think is kind of interesting and and lends a bit of context as well. When I was 30, I was overweight, reckless, and alone. Today, I'm in the best shape of my life, married to the love of my life, and 100% financially secure life is good. Now, in some sense, this would support what he's saying, right? By age 30, you should have everything figured out, except for the fact that he's saying he turned out okay, and when he was age 30, he definitely didn't have everything figured out. So which is it? Should we go the one way and narrowly circumscribe our friend group to those who speak about certain topics? Or should we figure this out as we go on and, you know, from age 30 on, maybe we can readjust or something like that? There's an initial problem that got raised by this tweet by Saul Soller. Whoa, very original Steve by age 30 should also be writing your own tweets. And so, you know, they went in and found some other accounts that were talking about these sorts of matters. Not exactly the same thing, but kind of similar. So really the advice that's being given here is is kind of a of a genre rather than really original advice. Moving on, this distinction between business, money and fitness on the one hand and pop culture and politics on the other can be called into question as we see these two tweets doing. Business, money, and fitness are politics and pop culture. You can't separate the concepts of business and money from their political context. And pop culture determines most of what's considered fit some good points, I think, there. And then another tweet here by age 30, you should stay away from accounts talking business and money without politics, uh, making a similar point. And moving on, we find this great quip by Kevin McHale. Some of us have friends that can talk about all five topics, business, money, fitness, and politics and pop culture. I I think that's a good point as well. And we're going to see some other discussions of this friend group Starting off with a pop culture reference from Blockbuster Plus. Blockbuster Plus has obtained exclusive footage of Steve and his interesting friends. And if you don't recognize that, those are stills from the movie American Psycho in which you know, Patrick Bateman and all of his buddies get together and they're looking at business cards and talking about all the different ways in which they're trying to, you know, gain money and power and prestige with each other. And it's kind of a stuffy context, you could say. 
There's another great quip here, though. I was going to say by age 30, your friends should just be Patrick Bateman, but at least he was into music. There's that famous scene where he's talking about Huey Lewis and the news. So even Patrick Bateman is into pop culture to some degree, isn't he? Moving on, um, here's some other good observations. And now we're getting to things that are not just poking fun, but getting quite critical. By age 30, you should stop taking advice from social media, especially Twitter. I think that's a good point. By age 30, you ought to be able to recognize a soulless, friendless grifter at 100 paces. And we're seeing this grifter thing coming up here. Another one, person with bad advice spends money he got from sheep taking his bad advice to spread his bad advice even further. And then finally, by by age 30, you should probably know that grifters will try to get your money out of you by trying to make you feel inadequate in some way. Don't fall for it. And I leave it to you to decide whether or not Steve Millionaire Habits is a grifter or not. It's certainly a debatable point. Going on, here we start getting into some, you know, reflections about what really matters in life and how we should understand friendship. Great point made here by Janet Potts. Friends are transactional. They're who I hang with to de-stress and relax with. I am not my job. My job is what I do to make a living. And if I need to network, I'll find people to discuss business with. You're conflating business contacts with actual friends. I think this is a great distinction, a great point. We see a similar thing being said by subject impermanence. Maybe just hang out with people you like. Friendship shouldn't be, like once again, we see the word transactional. That's just sad. And then a very funny retort by Jared. Oh yeah, well then I'm not going to offer you the once in a lifetime opportunity of investing in my pyramid scheme. Transactional and also grifty as well. Pocket Raptor V. Vivian says, how about having a friend group that's just as passionate about you and your hobbies and interests and actually wants to partake in said hobbies or interests with you? I think having supportive friends is more important than a bunch that's mainly focused on materialisms. And that's a really great point. The notion of friendship here is very truncated, isn't it? Kate Willett writes, by age 30, you should have two cats, one who is really snuggly, another one who is naughty and destroys your stuff in a funny way. And you might say, what's that, that one doing here? Well, it's about priorities. Cats are not, unless you're breeding them for some sort of, you know, weird show thing, they're not really an investment opportunity and they're not going to give you advice about business or finance or anything like that, let alone help you get fit even if you do something like cat yoga. At the same time, cats do make good friends. We get deeper into the what really matters and how to make sense of these things in this set here. And this is a great one by Martin Toon. When you're 42 and recently finishing cancer treatment, trust me, conversations about business and money become pretty useless. Conversations about your friends' loves, fears, passions, goals, values, what makes them tick and shared experiences are way more useful. And notice that he doesn't just say valuable, he actually says useful there, which is really what we're talking about. Here's another good one from Dame Senorita Felicidad. Always hope. I'm sure you mean well, but this tweet is fiercely confirming my suspicion that chasing after wealth is a pursuit that breeds shallowness of character. By 30, one should hopefully have a group of friends with whom we share mutual respect, love, and unconditional acceptance, saying that's where the friendship priorities should really lie. And here's another one from Cypher7. Let's forget about Steve, who seems to have set an arbitrary best before date for life. That's rubbish. By age 30, you might have found out what brings you joy and what feeds your mind and soul and learn not to listen to the likes of Steve, who thinks with his checkbook. Uh, again, you know, identifying a mistaken set of priorities. Here's another one by age 30 from Nick, the Linux exper experiment. By age 30, you will probably know not to give a rodent's bottom about random advice from people who treat their life as a career. And that's the really key thing there, treating one's life as a career. Finally, Jeff Tiedrich, pro tip, don't take advice on friendship 
from people who use money as a metric for self-worth. Money is not the measure for everything. And Sonia, the bad country follows up by your 40s or 50s, or sooner you realize that people who talk frequently about their money or wealth are nothing but insufferable, shallow boors. Call me dull, but I prefer to talk about amazing books, podcasts, gardening, hobbies, documentaries, shows on Netflix, etc. So we have a host of other valuable things besides just money, business, and fitness being highlighted here. Going on, Colin T. is maniacal, says, by age 30, you should have grown out of this high school mentality and found a group of friends that you trust and respect and enjoy interacting with. Instead of judging people on their small talk, like relationships or business transactions, you need to get the return on investment on amigos. Good point there. James Corey, the science fiction author, who we know is actually several people working together, is being a millionaire worth the price of all your your friends being boring twits. Ryan Malice says, not everything is a job, my dude. And a good point as well. And then finally, Thomas James, hustle culture perpetuates so much ugliness in the world. Neither waste your breath on nor subject your friends to such mean and boorish conversation as that about business, money. Cultivate a friend group with whom you can have convivial, beautiful, edifying conversations. And, you know, I think there's some good points there. I, I don't know that you necessarily can't talk about money or business. That can be very interesting as well. But that shouldn't be it. That shouldn't be everything that's going on. Then we get to some of the really great joking responses that reveal something in the jokes. So Megan Basham says, by age 30, your friend group should include one former tax collector, an insurrectionist, and an impulsive fisherman. Who is she referencing there? If you don't know, well, that's uh, Jesus of Nazareth. <laughs> Right. So he does have, you know, Matthew, the former tax collector, Peter, the impulsive fisherman and Simon, the zealot. Dr. Ben Gazer talks about a important philosopher. By age 30, you should have moved to a garden in Athens and spend your days discussing philosophy and eat little pots of cheese. Who is he talking about? Epicurus. And then we get some great fictional ones coming from sci-fi. By age 30, you should have passed the Kobayashi Maru from Star Trek and made the Kessel Run in less than 12 parsecs from Star Wars, right? And we have another one from Star Wars as well, from Death Star PR. By age 30, you should have a group of plucky rebels, including one princess, a chosen one, a pirate, a wise old hobo, a space bear, and two merchandise-friendly robots plotting to take down a galactic empire. And then finally, Finally, the famous speech from Blade Runner given by Rutger Hauer. By age 30, you should have seen attack ships on fire off the shoulder of Orion and watch sea beams glitter in the dark near the Tannhauser Gate. Isn't that wonderful? We also have some stuff from fantasy as well. By age 30, you should have a group of friends willing to share the burden of taking an ancient magic ring to be destroyed in a volcano. Lord of the Rings, right? And then we have false. By the age of 30, you should be a well-established adventurer who travels with a diverse group of fellow adventurers working quest after quest to help save the realm from a once dead chaos god with the occasional shopping episode and holiday special, of course. And then finally, a, a complete reference to D&D. &D. By the age of 30, you should have a group of friends that consists of a tank, a healer, a melee assassin, and a ranged spell caster. <laughs> Oh, these are quite great. And then some more pop culture references. By age 30, you should have 106 miles to Chicago, full tank of gas, half a pack of cigarettes, and be wearing sunglasses. That, of course, is the Blues Brothers after one of them picks the other one up at Joliet Prison, right? And then finally, there's a reference to the Steve Miller Band. By age 30, you should have nine friends. The Space Cowboy, Maurice, a picker, the Grinner, a lover, a sinner, the Joker, a smoker, and most importantly, the Midnight Toker. So these are, you know, a lot of fun. Now, moving on, a little bit about age and putting things into perspective about what we should be demanding or what should we should be advocating. Zero Reynolds says, here's my advice for by the time you're 20, and surprise, unsurprisingly, it is the same advice for by the same time you're 30, 40, and beyond. Ready? By the time you are, insert 
milestone age here. You should be actively seeking your own happiness on your own terms. That's it. Cheers. Soul writes, hello, my friends, as your resident 30 year old, let me tell you, by 30, you should have 30 years of age and experience under your belt. That's it. Everyone progresses in their own way and at their own pace. Don't let make anyone make you feel bad for having your own journey in life. And then Christina reinforces this by saying, by age 30, you should know that you are on your own path and shouldn't be guilted to fit the mold of somebody else. Know that the person you are is the person who survived all your good and your bad times. Know that tweets going viral doesn't mean that they are the truth. So some great wisdom there. Maybe we don't actually have to have these sorts of milestones. Here's another wonderful one by Scott Lynch. By age 30, you should have two wolves inside you, resting contentedly, having devoured the five uptight trophy friends some weirdo on Twitter said you had to get. And then finally, we have one more tweet and boom, you've been rickrolled. By age 30, you should have a group of friends that are never going to give you up, never going to let you down, never going to run around or desert you. So there you have it. A great set of responses to this interesting tweet that I'll point out too uh, is good for not just starting conversation, but if we look at it more carefully, is he actually saying that you should only have this friend group that you exclusively talk about these three topics with and you definitely don't talk about the other two topics with. I don't read it that way, but I, I understand that nearly everybody else did. And I think it's great that people have chimed in and we have this wonderful conversation about good priorities for a happy life.